Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, we'll be reviewing together Epson EB685WI. This is an ultra short throw 720p projector, but it has a lot to offer. That's why I purchased this. This is a second hand projector, but it cost me about $250 range. So it's quite a bit of tech and the brightness of this projector is quite a lot. Right now, it is three o'clock in the daylight and it's a summertime, so 2023. So the back, as you can see, overexposed window and it's a huge window. There is another big window, there is another big window over there. This room filled with huge amount of light and this device is right now in echo mode. It's a beast of a light source. So these things tend to design to use in schools. Schools are not dark. When you go to a school room as bright as possible for you can write that notes down. So against the white screen, they tend to use these devices for smart educational purposes. That, that's why this device has another sensor here, which we are not going to be using at all. It's connecting, connected to Forza Horizon 5 from Xbox Series X 4K console and it's delivering I think quite a bit of image. We have a couple of downsides but we will compare it in the end of the video with the Ultra Short Pro Laser 4K Xiaomi with the same size of screen and we'll take a look how much difference does it make, how much money you should be paying to the other model. Why I bought this model because I was wondering about how cheap you can have the ultra short throw. Still, there is not much of a solution like this one boo. Like this is a 450 lumen T2 Max new. I reviewed this. This is one of the most practical projectors out there. Just take a look at this. But this is a long throw. I'm using it in the bedroom and in the living room, I use it over two weeks, I suppose. So I was quite happy with the results and I can just screencast from a smart device and I can use also inside the Android. These things are easy to apply. Just look at this, put it on an Xbox and connect it and voila, you have a 100 inch of screen in the bedroom and you can play with the gamepad before you sleep. So this is easy thing, but there is no solution still like this in the ultra short throw arena because the ultra short throw devices tend to have expensive optical elements because they're giving the light from very close distance and they're creating huge images from very close the ultra short throw advantages i created another video so watch that video the main focus is i can walk in front of the projector and i don't affect the light at all but the main point for me was the brightness so we will test this device and we will compare it with the Xiaomi with the different videos. And a lot of people ask me that, get close and show the text. Well, if I'm being honest, this is a 720p projector. The text will show you the pixels. If you're a pixel peeper, you should buy a TV and you should go small. But let me just show you how you can get rid of the pixels. Because if you're wondering too much of a pixels, and you can solve it just like this. If I move it like this. Okay, this is 70 inch ish size right now. I didn't adjust the refocus because the focus lever is inside. I will just show the physical details of this device in the second part. But what it excites me, I can right now touch the screen. Okay, just don't focus on the focus too much. The minimal focus distance for this projector is creating about 60 inch. You can't go small from that. Like I can push it, go small, but the sharpness will go because it cannot focus. So right now it's about the infinity focus. It's not ideal, but I can show you the 60, 60 inch image. And let's just go back. You can't really tell when it's video playing or game playing, this is a 720p. You probably think this, this is a full HD projector. That's what's the point of this video. That's why I bought this. You can still live with full HD or 720p projectors. There is a catch to that. If you look at text and if you open up Excel files to show people text and numbers, 
you might want to go to full HD or 4K projectors and which we are using at our offices when we work and project Excel tables and text and stuff. But if you're playing games, the visual is like a video. So you can't really focus on the edges. And since you are creating, let me just get it back as much as possible. You can't look at it because it is right now 90 plus inches. You don't watch 90 inch from one meter. You just go way back, like at least three meters. So you can't really see. Of course, you can see the uh, pixels around the start game and accessibility settings. So if you are so picky, you need to go 4K. But for the 4K ultra short throw with the same amount of refresh rate, like 60, you need to pay $2,000 roughly. So $1,500 and $2,000. This is $1,500 4K projector. And in the end of this video, we're going to be looking at side by side with the same size. By the way, if you're wondering, this projector is going to fall off. It's not because the feet are at the edge of the TV unit right now. So even if I push it down, just look at this, it won't fall because of the weight is around here. I know it's not ideal, but to get this picture, and my small TV unit, this is probably 50 centimeters, maybe 40, 45. So the, this thing is nowhere small. When you compare it with the same brand Epson uh, TW650, this is probably three times or maybe even 3.5 times bigger projector. But it can project from 25 centimeters, roughly. 90 inch of screen and it's bright like 2700 to 3200 lumens of power so if i use the same projector like this is a long throw epson okay this is a 3000 lumen range of projector and i'm quite happy with this projector if i want to create a 100 inch or 90 i need to go somewhere around here and if i do that the light amount of light will be probably 10 times less than this projector, or at least maybe five times. I'm speaking roughly because the light decreases in a distance a lot. Like if you move at 20 centimeters, it just drops like half. Another 20 drops like half, and maybe quarter. And then if you move a meter, then drops like another half or maybe even more. So when you go to the 2.5 meters, let's, let's just think about it. For 100 inch ish size, you want to go 30 centimeter here, two and a half meter here for the regular throw. So that's one of the reasons that you still might want to consider in the second hand market ultra short throw projections. What are the downsides? There is always a catch. If you buy something this cheap, there needs to be a catch. The power consumption is higher. And we have a limitations of screen size. Right now, this projector, probably up top, I remember technically it's about 100, 110 inch, they say. But I remember when I tried it, it was about 90 and 100 inch between. So, of course, this is a 720p. You don't want to stretch it too much. 720p just can handle 85 most of the time. This is like 85 to 90 inches, and it's more than enough. But if you go just a little bit, it can't focus also. So the lens has the limitations and also 720p creates a limitation. So don't forget about this. This is a cheap ultra short throw, like around $250 range you can find. And most of the time, probably it will be coming out from a school in the secondhand market. So try to find a clean one, best one possible. I've cleaned this one from a, a, a dirty position I made another video how you can clean your projector right now it looks like new and we're going to be taking a look at the ports and what we can do with it and for me this setup I can add my TV satellite receiver to this and I can add a smart dongle and I did and I can add my console to this it has three HDMI ports this is one of the most important parts we'll be looking at the ports inside and I can use it with the console TV and the dongle all in one. And if I don't want to use the dongle, console will give me the basically everything that a dongle can do, like Netflix, Amazon Prime, everything, Series X. 
and I can buy a cheaper console, like instead of Series X, I can connect to Series S or Xbox One X, my earlier console. So you can really get away with one console, one ultra short throw, in the cheapest way possible if you buy all of them in the secondhand market. That's one of the reasons of this video. That's why I review Epson EB685WI. One other catch is right now you see the bending. I will be focusing on these topics a lot because the ultra short throw has a problem with the regular non-tension screens and this screen you know the channel is three meter which means 135 inch and i can't project this huge size with this projector it's not capable to do that one problem for my setup the second is the non-tension surface creates a wobbly wavy effect because we have distortions on the screen so you can see the distortion below and at the edge not just at the edge but the visual is always bending just focus on the right and i will put another video uh, some games show this type of distortions even more which will be we will be focusing on but in this video we're going to be comparing these two in the same screen the distortions will not be the problem for us because if it's the problem of the screen not because of the projectors but we're going to be focusing on the sharpness level and the picture quality and how you can still get away with 720p. I'll try to compare three different projectors. I'm not going to include Wambu. It's a full HD. It's a good projector, but we don't need to use it. Epson TW650 full HD projector with the same screen size. This is a long throw and you can find this with the same price like this. This is a $200, $300. $250-$300. This is also $250-$300 range. And this is about $1,500 range. So, how much of a difference? Quite a bit of much of a difference. And this is a 4K. Definitely, Xiaomi will probably overall win the picture quality and the sharpness and the pixel levels. But how close we can get with the budget? That's what we are going to test. And without further ado, the second part will be the specs and the close technical look at this device and then we'll be looking at the picture quality test by the way the one and the uh, the most one of the most things that i like about this projector it has 16 watts of power because they are trying to use in the demonstrations in the schools kids are tend to yell or they are excited they you need to deliver the sound from edge to edge in the same room 16 watts is a quite good of bit of power because this xiaomi has a 30 watts of rms power this is a 16. so it can be used as a tv and when i use it i know it doesn't have the base of the xiaomi xiaomi has one of the best sounds that i've listened so far from a projector although there are more expensive one from Weave Sonic, maybe, maybe uh, some Samsung models, but still, Xiaomi is one of the good ones, and this is a compact size projector. That's why I bought it, and the review will come later on. But 16 watts of power in a single unit with a $250, $300 range, you cannot go wrong. And the bulb cost is not much of a thing. If you look at the description below in this video, you'll probably find similar cost. So this projector bulbs like $20 roughly, this projector bulbs too. So you can change it and use it as a daily TV based unit. And one other thing, yes, there's a lot to love about this projector. These things tend to be designed, used in school and the presentations. The Epson focused on the cooling too much. And I will show you in the detailed close up shots but this thing is in echo mode you don't hear it that much when i open up the xiaomi you hear the buzzing because of the small size they probably use the small fans and they're spinning high rpm and this thing you don't really nearly hear it at all i hope this video gave you at this stage enough information before the details let's jump up the details of physical qualities of the Epson EB685WI and then the picture quality test. 
In this part of the video, Forza Horizon 5, playing with the Xiaomi at the back, so you're seeing some sort of reflection, but let's just take a look at the size. This thing is nowhere near a small thing. This is a Wombo T2 Max new, 450 lumens of a projector and it's full HD and it's fun to use it with the consoles and basically for the darker rooms this is ideal you can even use this with the ALR screen in a, in a dimly lit room I enjoy this projector quite a lot it is just one hand size small thing this is an Epson TW650 I love this this is a full HD projector and it has a good lens so it focuses quite light a lot and the distance is not too much for this projector but basically when it comes down to this epson eb 685 wi this is 40 uh, 37 centimeter to again 39 centimeter of size 37 to 39 this is nowhere near small for the height of it from the ground it's about uh, let's just say 14 to 15 centimeters. So up top at the back, this is the highest point. It's near 17 centimeters. So it's not a small thing. So I will, I will take these things on the ground and just focus on this unit. Uh, as you can see, these things are tend to uh, put on the ceiling. So the Epson text will be in the correct angle. And the feet are lost in the way. This is a second-hand product. So I add up just my uh, visa mount uh, monitor, uh, you know, the screws, hand screws with the plastic cover as a, uh, creating a feet because it's important. This area is high. And if you use like something like this, you have to make it in a flat level, same level with this. So you need to some sort of like a silicone based foot. You can adjust and stick up or you can just buy some unit to give it a bit of uh, ideal height to this device if you're not going to use it on the up top ceiling. So I put, take this thing aside, just these two things are apart and we need to, we need to remove this part. I found the piece inside. There's a single pin. You need to use a flat screw head and just push it to yourself and then it's opening so easily so you don't have to open these two covers. So let's take a look at from the side. And right now the shape is changed as you can see. I haven't cleared these areas yet but I have complete how to clear your projection video, projector video for this uh, projector basically so I can if I clean these areas and also the bulb area this will be pretty flat new looking projector let's take a look at from the side what do we have since everything is open right now it's easy to see we have HDMI and MHL support HDMI 1 HDMI 2 HDMI 3 we have three HDMI ports monitor out is a good thing and we got a com computer connection it's another good thing so if you're going to use these devices like a mirror screen uh, like a school uh, system so you can put your computer from uh, vga and also you got another monitor output which we will uh, which it will probably give you the mirror screen you can look at the screen while you're teaching stuff from your sitting position and the uh, students will see the same from the projector itself. So since it's 720p, it's not going to be difficult from giving it from VGA port. And we have RS233, which is basically a serial port. And we have a uh, sync out and in, and we have mic, audio and video composite and USB-A. USB-A is a good thing for the dongle we have. So the space is huge. As you can see, this is my hand space. So it is, since it is huge, like I can put my whole screwdriver, I can put my hand for this gap, I can create enough space for, let's, let me just show you how big it is. Like this is an Xbox controller and it can fit inside. So with this space, we can hide everything that we have. We can hide a dongle, we can, we can put, USB A port, which I've used with my Android dongle, 4K Android dongle. So I can also power up my dongle. We can also hide inside of this unit 
small TV satellite receiver, which we can use this device as a daily ultra short row TV. And also we can use three HDMI port with anything we like with different consoles, different Blu-ray or media players that we have or anything like a computer. So basically uh, the power uh, adapter is inside. You can just have a power cable for your PC style. This makes this device is quite easy. We are not going to be using the mic input or the uh, we are not doing a karaoke with this device or we are not going to be probably doing a teaching stuff. But if you're a teacher and if you want to use it in the school or educational purposes, you can uh, enhance this device usage with the Epson pen and make it smart. But I don't have the pen. I bought it. This one is secondhand. These are educational purpose uh, projectors. When I close it, let's just take a look at this, how easy it is. It has a rail system. We have two feet and they are looking quite good. So we are going to come like this. This part should be above and we're going and we're ready to go. We're finished. So this area, which I, I just need the uh, screw, two screws. This is the optical area or a smart uh, pen and the uh, in integration area. And the buttons are here. We can control everything. Uh, I don't have right now a original uh, remote. I will uh, I purchased it. It will come soon. But this is a general projector universal remote and it works nearly with every detail it has. And also the buttons are reverse order because they tend to use these devices, like I told you, on the ceilings. So the Epson logo is also reverse. There is nothing wrong with this. This is the device choice. But if you're just too you know, pissed off about the reversed text, then you might not like it on the TV unit, but it's no problem for me. By the way, there are other models, EB685, EB695, EB700 series. So there are full HD versions of these devices. If you can find one with a good price, why not go full HD? They are quite bright and you won't regret the price that you pay for it. And if you find it in the second hand market, it has a probably Kensington lock. So uh, against the stealing of the device, we have one single pin here. If you remove the pin and take this part, the cover will uh, fall out. Uh, we have also uh, here a filter, which is quite a big filter, and the air uh, ventilation system is quite good. Uh, I believe uh, this is why this device is silent. And also, using this device in the schools, these things tend to resist the dust because of the filter and the design itself. It's probably way better than the regular projectors that are quite cheaper. Uh, they also have filters, but these devices are built to use at home. So I will create another video how you can clean these devices with different equipment. But basically, these are very durable devices compared to regular projectors. And let's just take a look at the fan. This fan is just like an NVIDIA stock or NVIDIA's original design, a turbine design fan. And also, I believe another fan, exhaust or intake fan, is about here. So this is probably nine centimeters, eight or nine, quite a big fan. And we have also a turbine fan. So we have two fans. That, that is why this device is quite a bit of silent device on especially on the echo mode so you won't regret when you buy this device you won't hear it like the xiaomi or any other brand that i've tested so far if they are small they tend to use five or six centimeters of fans and my apps uh, my lg 600 and um, as, as LG HF 60 LS was using probably four centimeters of fan and it was awful, like quite a lot of noise. So when it's on the not echo mode, like a normal mode or a strong mode. So you won't regret the decision that you make. Although it's big, it comes with its advantages of the size. So you can hide nearly everything. Uh, so you can keep it as a single piece on the TV unit. Even though it's big, it's going to hide the rest of the equipment that you have. This part is nearly over. So you can also change the lamp from here. I'm not going to open this part. Some people will definitely ask about the close-up shots. This is the Horizon 5 settings. As you can see the text, the accessibility and the logo shows the 720p uh, size. 
uh, or, or definitely pixel quality and uh, right now we are projecting about mm, 85 to 90 inches so if you go a little bit of above and 100 inch you definitely see the pixels you can still understand the pixels so this is a 70p uh, 720p projector but when you go back you don't see it at all at least moving object it's not easy to understand uh, pixels around the edge and if your eyes getting picky about it yeah you might see it like you use a 4k projector full hd projector and then this 720p you can see it but if you don't care about this too much then you're good to go in this part of the video i'd like to show you that uh, epson 685 wi as a text uh, spec it is connected to a laptop here and we are giving full HD signal and I'm getting close to an exile file. But let me just be clear, this is the stock settings. Let's just do it. Camera is one hand. Sharpness is 19. This is fully pushed in. So let's take a look at the numbers and the text. We can see the pixels. But if I go down and the sharpness, let's just see the menu. If I go down at the sharpness, let me just show it by around here because when I adjust, you can see the difference. Let's go down. You can see the blue ring. Get close. It blurs a lot, 720p. But from a distance, you can read the text and probably you're going to get closer to create a 75 or maybe 65 inch with the 720. Let's just boost the sharpness and see how it goes. So that's how it works. This projector has a 20 piece of 20 steps of sharpening on the text or everything. So you can read basically everything in an easy way. Let me just get back. You can really see stuff. Yes, even from here, let me just just a zoom from the laptop, get down, yeah, if I get the numbers big enough and with the sharpness, I can read everything from distance as you can see the whole setup here. So if you're still wondering 720p, is it enough? Is it good? When you sharpen it, it's good enough. Yeah, we can see the fringing, we can see a lot of things, but when movies or videos or gameplay is on, you don't realize that. That's how good this thing really is. In this part of the video, we're going to take a good look at the Epson 685WI uh, projector's detail menu. As you can see, we got color mode which is dynamic presentation, cinema, sRGB, and the blackboard, since these devices are mostly designed for projecting into the school, like the educational stuff, they have a blackboard setting. So this is the dynamic the settings that I love. Let's go to the presentation. Colors and the sharpness is going a little bit. Image becomes soft, but it's still accessible and usable. Don't worry about the distortion, it, it's about the screen. The cinema is a little softer and a little less contrasted, let's just say. sRGB, sRGB is a little darker, but the colors are again like the cinema, a little bit of down. I'd like to tend to use it at the dynamic board with an extra saturation added later on. And this is the blackboard setting. So uh, let's go to the dynamic, see the difference. Dynamic shows a huge amount of power increase, if you ask me. And the brightness. Right now we can adjust the brightness, but that doesn't mean that we can have uh, the next generation, new generation, 2023 uh, gen of contrast level, because this is basically an education ultra short -term projection. So catching the high end contrast is difficult with these devices since they don't have the HDR support. So this is okay for me for the price and we can increase the contrast but we'll be losing the highlights the color saturation i most of the time go to the 60 65 and it's okay for me and as you can see it's quite good and i'm going back 
The tint is up to you. You can tint the color. Sharpness. Right now it's 20. It's highly sharpened around the edge, like the start game, accessibility, and horizon 5. You'll see it. And also I've showed the same settings with the text. Uh, but I don't care since this is a 720p projector. Uh, sharpening stuff won't hurt too much, uh, especially from the distance. It's digital uh, sharpness, but it's very effective. If you haven't watched that part, you'll be probably seeing that part uh, when I did it. Image adjust enhancement is interesting. We have also noise reduction, but I'm not doing it too much. I don't care. Image looks fine to me. I can accept this image quality, R, G, B, C, M, Y. This is one of the things that we can adjust a lot. So we can adjust truly many things with this projector, but I don't tend to go this way. I just go basic stuff like the uh, brightness, contrast, and color saturation. It's up to you. We got also auto iris, which is an important settings. So right now it's high speed, but you can do it in a normal but i am most of the time playing with the xbox series x and also using it as a tv so action movies and stuff will always happen the aspect is right now auto the over scan right now is off but you can do it advanced menu is let's just go in hdmi video range so right now we are giving full hd signal to this device i didn't try uh, to put 4k signal in 720p device probably it won't support it but you can put 4k dongles and play youtube videos in a 4k resolution but you uh, are uh, probably giving full hd signal from your console and you're from dongle no worries there the view when it comes down to the video you don't see that much of a difference since the source is good video will be great and we showed that uh, examples in this video in other parts of course geometric correction quick corner we got uh, horizontal and vertical key stoning and we have also buttons on the device quick corner correction is quite good like the four corner keystone uh, if we add, like we can move the corners. So I'm not going to do that. Like, let's just do to the left. As you can see, it's moving the up left. Let me just move it. And going down on the left. As you can see, I can do it, but it's not going to do in a huge way. Steps are small. So let me just go back. And it's a good thing to have since this is an ultra short throw and correction is important. Art, arc correction. Uh, since these devices are, if this settings is changed, Im image may be distorted. So arc correction is kind of like a uh, basically correcting this part. If you're projecting to a surface and if you have arc, you can correct this. So it's a good thing to have with an ultra short throw projection projector. And let me just go back. So the settings are split screen. We have we have a couple of inputs, three HDMI ports and VGA port. So having the split screen will be good for educational purposes. But for 720p, I don't recommend using it. But if it's okay with you, you can play TV on the one side and Xbox on the other side. Since it's a 90 inch ish huge screen size, you can still get away with it. It's a good thing to have. Zoom is kind of like a digital, but having the zoom is going to get you where you need, uh, where your standing point. Let's just do the zooming. This, this is digital zooming, but it's quite good. Let me just zoom all the way. And from 90 inches, we are going about, if we go full, this is, I guess this is about 60 inches. Yeah, let me just go back. When you push the button, it just got faster, but steps are a little bit slow. So it's not automatic and finished it, no. So you need to go slowly to the settings. I'm sorry this part takes a bit of time, but I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to show you this uh, volume Volume level, we have one. And as you can see, if I push it too much, it goes away up. And the sound quality is good, but I can't show it to you all the way since my kid is sleeping. The HDMI link, we have lock settings. We have pointer. 
as I told you before, this device supports smart pens and stuff. So you have pointer support, mic input support, and remote receiver, and user button on the device probably. Pattern, I don't know, but probably, uh, yes, this is a pattern display, user pattern and stuff. Installation guide, we don't need. Extended settings are interactive functions, easy interactive functions for schools. Home screen, display, user's logo. This is like a kind of like a, if you're a school and stuff and logo, some sort of an uh, interaction management and also the operation projection, uh, projecting from front, upside, downside, rear kind of project, projector settings where you place the projector right now. We are using on the front the operation direct power on is off high altitude mode off if we are using this projector on the mountains maybe where the air is less compared to the ground level so this is quite important auto source search auto power on monitor out port connect t connect l p c b 02 date and time i'm going back ab settings usb type b uh, easy interaction uh, interaction uh, again multi projection is something you can or you want to manage maybe i don't know because because you can also use many things we got nearly every language here not my uh, native language turkey turkish oh i see turkish here so we, we got a lot of languages. So when we get back the network settings, wireless mode, network info, wire, wired LAN, we have a LAN port. Those settings probably for uh, the network controls and remote controls if you're going to use because this device doesn't have any smart functions in it. The echo mode, right now we are using in the echo 2. We got three power settings. Let's just go uh, to the, from echo, go back and show you the echo okay let me just touch the controller oh no i don't i didn't want to do that let me just get back let's just go static to the scene and we can continue from there and because i want to show you the exact picture the difference between the echo echo 2 echo 2 and normal mode in the same visual as possible if it comes down to the static menu, then we can go. Yep. When the car arrives, it will stop on the menu. I will just get back. Yep. Yes, we can get back and show the rest. Since change the camera. Yep. Right now we are in the echo two mode echo two is this i'm going to the echo just be careful that doesn't change too much but when i go bright or normal you can see the difference let me just go back just focus on the ground and the upper levels difference is a lot when you take a good look at this so this even in the echo mode delivers pretty good image echo 2 is pretty much silent so when we go to the also uh, light optimizer menu we got echo mode it's automatically on sleep mode we got sleep timer av mute timer standby echo display is on and reset mode the information is projector information as you can see right now this projector is 45 hour normal mode and 21 hour echo mode uh, but i'm always using in the echo 2 since I got the projector, this device has uh, the changed lamp in it. So the lamp is already changed. Right now, take a look at good look at the refresh rate. It is 60 Hz. So this is supporting 60p gaming. And we got the version of the device. It's not too much of an important. And we got reset. So this is the menu overall.
I'm going to play some for you to show what action games look like on this projector. Don't focus on the distortion. I will be putting on the normal mode because I want to show the brightest possible picture. And it fills the screen right now. I'm shooting 4K. Finally, we have come to conclusion part. I had to shorten the video. I told you in the beginning of uh, the video, like the Epson TW650, I will also add a full HD long throw in this equation or comparison. But my kid woken up from uh, her daily sleep in the middle of the day. So she interrupted the footage and I need to just make a little adjustment for the video. I just compared the Xiaomi Ultra Short Pro 4K and 720p Epson. What we can talk about in general, Epson delivers a great image quality, even though it's 720p, but I adjusted the sharpness in a high, high, one of the highest levels, like it has probably 20. I am at the 16th of the sharpness level. So I've just add 
uh, digital sharpness to the image because it's 720p and we are projecting like 85 inch ish screen to 90 probably so that's one of the reasons and if i don't say uh, to you if you watch the video Epson delivers like full HD quality, so you might not understand if nobody tells you that this is a 720p and cheap projection. So let me just get it back. And the end of the video, this is a heavy and big piece of uh, projector. And most of the time they've come, they are coming from schools, so they don't have legs or they have ceiling mounts if you want to put it on the tv unit they won't look something cute like the xiaomi does in this video so basically you got options the main difference will be shown like the text as you can see start game and the accessibility settings and the forza horizon 5 text forza logo and on the edges and around around the edges of the subjects like leaves cars uh, bridges everything around the edges you see the difference between 720p and the 4k but when you play when the visual is floating and when you're concentrated on the video by its own you don't really realize a huge amount of difference i know there is a big difference you can see it by the visual i'm not telling the 4k the, uh, this is delivering near 4k quality nowhere near at all but it's delivering quite a bit of close image quality to the full hd projectors that i've tested so far so the good optics can deliver you a better image and if you have higher end projection even though the resolution is lower will give you better quality in general idea so this is like a second hand uh, mercedes benz and bmw like uh, you have the performance but you have some sort of old generation car but better performance but you can buy a new golf without a feeling and no it's not maybe the perfect example but i'm a car guy also so you can buy second hand and the comfort of the high-end model of the old era and compare it to the new generation high-end it's not being an uh, ideal comparison you have to compare this to its price range of today what you can buy for 200 250 dollar you can't really buy a brand new bull projector full hd bulb new one or led full hd models you can buy a less power consumption led small projectors around 200 250 dollars like 600 newmans of long throw led maybe one bull maybe similar brands by but they won't give you 3000 lumens up close to the screen and they are not ultra short throws so you can't actually buy something near to this device for this price so the second hand in the second hand this could be a true bargain if you just give up from some of the sharpness some of the resolution and if you're not going to project too much of a text like a edgy kind of small lines you won't really feel the difference between especially if you shrink the size just a little bit you can't really purchase 70 or 85 inch tv for this price for 250 dollars probably you can't really buy in the second hand 75 inch tv but you really can create a 75 good tv with epson eb 685 wi so that's why one of the reasons i purchased this and i want to show you this my overall conclusion it's a silent device it is tend to build last long because of the it's designed for the schools working for all day long but you're not going to be using all day long like a school so it's going to last quite a longer and it has a cooling mechanism quite good designed very silent that is a plus it has a good audio setup like 16 watts probably and it's maybe it's it's lacking a little bit of a bass but you can connect many bluetooth devices like i showed in my earlier videos or any professional soundbar or audio solution so you can connect dongles it has three hdmi ports and i believe with the three hdmi ports and the usb ports it can deliver you many things in a 
single package. And one of the things that I also mentioned in the uh, detailed physical, uh, physicals of this device, it can handle everything inside. Even though it's big, there's a huge amount of space beneath it because it's normally designed, uh, put it on the top uh, of a uh, project, projection, uh, let's just say school wall, white wall for interactivity purposes. So there's actually a point and a big gap. So you can hide everything, every little cable, every connector that you have beneath that space between the ceiling and the device itself. You can do the same thing between the device and the TV unit. You can hide really TV dongle box, the Android dongle, TV, maybe even TV satellite receiver, and also the HDMI connection. If you add this equation, one HDMI splitter, you can connect console, dongle, and a TV satellite receiver, and many other devices as well, just with a single unit. So even though it's big, I know it's bigger than this, even though it's old technology, you can easily change the bulb for $20, $25, and it's easy to change the bulb, easy to clean, and the filter is huge, and it's silent. For me, it's for this price, there's not much more to expect, and if you're expecting too much of a sharpness, then you might want to uh, spend five times more money and get yourself a full HD next scan or 4K next scan ultra short draw. Other than that, this is a bargain. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more, find out what is a bargain, what is not. And if you want to learn more about the new projectors, new projectors are coming. Uh, companies are trying to sponsor my channel and sending their devices for tests. And you know, I am doing my best to test the devices compared to one another. And the, at the end of the video, I'd like to talk about one bit of thing that will affect if you buy this uh, old generation school purpose projectors. They tend to lack of contrast and they tend to lack of um, uh, color accuracy because they are built to project on a white wall in a lit room. That's why they are strong in the LED area, like they are strong in the power output. They are bright, very bright. That's why they are normally named Brightlink. And they have some se extra sensor, with, which we are not going to be using for the smart table and smart uh, wall and stuff. And the lacking the color accuracy can be adjusted from the menu a little bit, but you can't really catch this type of projector colors or professional projector colors with the, the cheap and uh, secondhand, this style ultra short for projectors. But while I use of it, it didn't bother me too much of the uh, color accuracy problems or the, uh, the light problem. Because if you get the uh, room too dark, you realize I can't show the exact potential problem, but if I try to edit in the screen right now, just a little bit of increasing the in the edit video editing, you'll see some of the light leaks uh, around and also the contrast lag because we um, adjust the camera to the both projectors, which one uh, the Xiaomi is brighter and uh, because Xiaomi is getting closer uh, to Xiaomi is 1500 lumens. This is a 3000 uh, lumens of level and this is in the echo mode xiaomi is just having a one simple mode actually and if it's a secret mode it's not activated right now and the brightness level is higher in the xiaomi uh, but they are very close even though this is a laser one it doesn't matter too much they are getting similar effect and uh, the color accuracy and the black levels are let's just say 30 percent probably or 40 percent better when you're watching with your eye with the xiaomi but the price difference is this is 1500 dollars this is 300 dollars five times more this is brand new this is second hand so it depends how you purchase how much bargain you can have and how much price you can find you can also consider vivitech and thank you ultra short throw projections uh, you can think about them but uh, the one thing that I want to rem remind you, this is a closed mirror setup, so it doesn't get the dust too much. If you buy an open setup like a Neck or Vivid Storm or BenQ, they tend to have like an open mirror setup. Mirrors can be uh, scratched, 
and also getting the dust. So the image quality uh, will be getting lower in the long run, long use. And in the second hand market, uh, just be careful before the purchase. Just check the mirror quite good and try to use the focus and try to understand if it's focusing or not. But breaking these things, lenses and focus systems are quite difficult because they are quite simple. Um, either mirror or just a lens by its own projecting. And don't forget about subscribe and like the videos and just comment to support the channel. It doesn't matter that you just like the video and just enjoy the content. Just write, please, simple stuff. If you learned anything from this uh, video, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. Hope to see you in the next video. Home Cinema and Tech Review. Bye.